to the Art of Code. My name is Mark Time, and what you see behind me here is a shader that I did a while ago, and I was planning on making a tutorial for that, but I got too lazy uh, up until now. So uh, what we're going to do in the next few videos is I'm going to explain to you how to make this shader. So let's get started with the basics. And press the new button. Oof. Okay, so gone. So we're gonna build the shader from scratch. So I'm gonna go a little bit faster in the beginning and not explain so much because these things I've explained all in previous videos. So if there's anything that you don't understand, then be sure to check out my previous videos. So I'm gonna take the X component of the resolution here and divide that by uh, or multiply that by i resolution dot x divided by i resolution dot y. Uh, that is to get rid of uh, that is to get rid of the squash that you get if you don't have a square viewport. So that's the first thing. Then I'm going to define a camera position, and I'm going to do that at let's say zero comma a little bit above the ground, 0 0.2 comma uh, 0. And now I'm going to define a look at point that is uh, not lock at, look at, that is slightly in front of my camera. So it's exactly the same, but it's in front. So in the, uh, in the Z direction, it is a little bit in front. And now uh, I'm going to, I want my camera position I'm going to look at, and I want to turn that into a ray. And for that, I'm going to make a function. And actually, before I make a function, uh, if you remember, a ray has an origin and a direction. Uh, those are two vector threes. I'm going to make a structure that puts those, like packages those two uh, into one neat little package so that uh, we can pass it around a little bit easier. So a vector three origin and a vector three direction I have for that array. So that's how you make a structure. Uh, and then I'm going to make a function that returns me array. So I'm going to do array, get array, and then that function is going to take as an input a UV, and it's going to take a uh, a camera position, cam pause. It's going to take a look at and it's going to take a zoom value and this and I don't know why it does this stupid indentation um, so it like everything should be fine uh, okay so now we're gonna just do the camera setup and again if you don't know what I'm doing here then that's because you didn't check my previous video so so go check it in the description below or maybe I'll put it over there so uh, we're going to first make a, ve a forward vector, which is the normalized uh, vector from the camera position to the look at position. So minus cam pause. I wrote look at again. I don't know why I keep doing that. So that's my forward vector. And then my right vector is the cross product between the world up vector which is 0 comma 1 comma 0 and my forward vector and last but not least we have our camera up vector which is the cross product between the forward vector and the right vector uh, and those are our basis vectors for our camera uh, and now we have to calculate the center of the screen, which is also a vector 3, which I call C for center, and that is the ray origin. And by the way, before I do that, let me just make the ray here that we're going to output. So I call the ray A, and then, and then um, in the end, we're, we're going to have to return that ray. So here I'm going to say, oh, and then here I can already, already say that the origin of ray A is just the camera position. So, and now what I can do over here is not delete a V, but press end. And 
the center of the screen is the origin of the ray plus the forward vector times the zoom. All right, and now I can calculate my intersection point, which I will call I. So I, the intersection point, is the ray origin plus, uh, no, hang on a second, what am I, uh, da, da, the intersection, no, what am I doing? Sorry, the ray origin is the center of the screen plus uv dot x times the right vector plus uv dot y times the up vector. Is that correct? Da, 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 right, uh, up, yeah, that seems correct. And now we can calculate the ray direction, which is this one. And the ray direction is, uh, is the intersection point, and we're gonna also normalize this. Uh, it's not really necessary here, but it's good to get into the habit of doing that because uh, in future videos we might, we might need it like that. So we're going to normalize the vector from the, uh, from the camera origin to the intersection point. So that's intersection point minus camera origin. So like that. And now we can just return that, uh, that ray A. Okay, so now we have a get ray. So now over here we can we can say okay ray r equals get ray, and then I'm gonna throw my uv in there and my cam pause and uh, my look at look at and my zoom which I'm gonna do I'm gonna set my zoom to two. We want a little bit of a zoomed camera. So now I have my ray. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make up just a test point in 3D space. I call it P equals Vec3. And I'm going to put that at 0, 0, 5, let's say. Um, and now I want to draw that point. But to, in order to draw that point, I need to have a function that gives me the distance from the ray to that point. And so let's make a function for that. And before we make that function, um, we will make another function that gives us the closest point, closest point on a ray to another point. So we're going to give this a ray, and we're going to give this a, a point in 3D space. And this function is going to give us back a point that lies on the ray that is the, cl the closest point possible that lies on the ray to point P. I'm not sure if I explained that right, but I hope you get it. So that's going to return me the closest point. So that, that is r dot o plus max times, not max times, the max of zero and uh, the dot product of uh, the point minus the origin. Oh, sorry, minus the origin with the direction and I explained this in previous videos so go check it out uh, and then times the direct the ray direction so that should be that so now that we have a closest point now making making a function that returns me the distance uh, from a ray to a point is, is not that hard because I can just um, get the closest point first oh here let me actually type it out first so so this function returns me the closest distance or the distance from the point to the ray and what is that well that is the um, the length of p minus uh, the closest point of r and p all right so let's think about this for a second so we have a so we have a point in 3d space and now we have our ray somewhere else. And now first what we do is we find the closest point on the ray to that point. And now we just calculate the distance between those two points. And that's the distance from a point to a ray. So is that correct? Do, do, do. I hope so. Let's see. All right. So now we go down here. And now I can make a variable d. And that is the distance from ray r to point p. And oh, well, I need to do it after, obviously, after I define my point P. So there. 
and um, actually let me also make this a little bit bigger for you guys so you can read that easier that might be easier should have done that in the beginning uh, and now so now I have a distance and now I'm going to use my smooth step to, 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 to draw a circle out of that uh, out of that distance and because we're going to be using smooth step a lot it's a good idea to define that so I'm going to do define uh, s a comma b comma t is smooth step a comma comma b comma t uh, t there and so all, all that does is that every time it sees somewhere s and then three variables uh, it, it will re replace it with smooth step and three variables so that just saves us a bit of typing uh, down the line so c equals s and then 0.1 comma 0 0.09 which is a value slightly smaller so that uh, we don't get an inverted circle and d and now i'm gonna uh, get rid of some lines here and i'm going to throw in that c value here for all of my things and it's gonna probably explode in my face but let's see so ah and it worked the first go did it like this is the first time that ever happened so um all right so the next point is that yeah before i wrap this video up i am going to put this 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 drawing like the, fu the function to draw a little dot like this um i'm going to make a function for that um so so these points are called so this effect of of out of focus highlights is called bokeh so it's, it's i think it's a japanese term so we will call our function bokeh and our bokeh function is going to take in a ray r it's going to take in a point in 3d space of where we want the dot to appear and then it's going to take in a size and it's going to take in a blur value so that we have some control over how sharp the edges of the bokeh are. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to take these two things here. I'm going to cut them out. I'm going to put them in my bokeh function. And now um, I'm going to return my value C here. And now instead of a hard-coded size here, I'm going to have my size that I put in as a parameter over there. And then for the blur, I'm going to do size times one minus blur. And what this does is that if my blur is 0.1, let's say like 10%, then this will go to 0.9 and this will make it 10% smaller. Make this value always 10% smaller than this value, regardless of how big size it is. So uh, that's a neat way to do that. Um, and so let's go down here and see if that works. So C equals bokeh, I throw in my ray, I throw in my point. Uh, and then my size, um, I forgot what my size was. Well, let's make it 0.3, whatever, and then 10% blur, and let's see if that works. Okay, so I made, made a bucket point a little bit bigger. Uh, I'm gonna make it a little bit fancier than this, because um, I want the outline here to be a little bit brighter than what's on the inside, just to add a little flourish. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna multiply this by another smooth step um, I'm gonna uh, let me just write it out and I'll explain it so this uh, would 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 be zero this would be zero wherever I'm closer wherever I'm closer to the center than 80% of the radius right uh, and then from 80% to 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 100% it's gonna go to to one so this would cut out the center completely like that uh, I don't want it to cut out the center completely. I, in the middle, I, so I, in the middle, I, want, I don't want it to multiply by zero. I want it to multiply by some other value that's not zero. So let's say 0 0.7. And, and, and then on the outside, it does multiply by one. So now I have something that makes the outline just a little bit brighter. So maybe I can pronounce the effect a little bit more like that. It just makes the bokeh effect in the end just a little bit sexier. Um, and then, yeah, if I, if I wanted to make a color here, so I could do vec3 call equals, 
um, uh, vec3 and I could say some sort of orangey yellow color and then I multiply that times my bokeh mask times C and over here I have to say call comma one let's say and that will make a colored bokeh point and that is going to be our starting point for our second video so I hope to see you next time